Recently, I was lucky enough to be invited to visit KUKA's headquarters in Germany, where I got to see some of the technology that they've been working on, things like the new Iron Tech uh, robot range, the KRC5 microcontroller, their SCARA robot, and something that I'm quite excited about that they were very nice enough to send me one to try is the Ready2 pilot system that we're going to have a look at today because I don't talk about my job or what I do very often on this YouTube channel anyway. My research is focused primarily around interfacing with robotics. So my PhD topic is interfacing with robotics for architects and designers. And that's kind of where my interest lies. And we have a box in a box which is something. So what is ready to pilot? Sure, that doesn't matter. Well, firstly, we have instructions that are in German, which is helpful. We have a smart pad. Now, you might think that this smart pad looks like any other smart pad, but unlike the one we currently have attached to our Agulus here. This one has some technology in it. The only way that you can sort of tell is if you look at the back, you can see that it's a KUKA Smart Pad ready to pilot edition. So this actually has a wireless receiver in it, which allows us to talk with the ready to pilot system. Get rid of that. So, what do we get? This is my first time actually unboxing something like this, which is cool. The main, the main part of the Ready2 Pilot is the six degree mouse. So unlike the traditional six degree mouse that comes with most robotic systems like the Kukas, attached to the smart pad, this one you can actually install anywhere and it will wirelessly communicate with the control PC. So this is the primary bit that I'm looking forward to installing and having a play with. We've got a couple mounting brackets, I guess. We can, yep. So to mount it and have it removable. Probably don't want it on your robot all the time. It's quite expensive, I guess. Uh, wireless USB dongles for the communication to the control PC from the mouse and the smart pad. Uh, recharger and a USB connection, which I imagine has the software, the KUKA option package that we can install via Work Visual. For me, the main element of the Ready2 Pilot 2 package is the external six axis mouse. We can mount this on an end effector or the robot itself and then program it to be an immediate sort of way of manipulating the robot and programming. Unlike the original one, which I've never used to be honest, I don't think it had the buttons Whereas on this edition, we have two buttons, one and two, that we're able to program. We can use any global variable in KSS and KRL and set it, say, if we want to move it to a location, record the position in LIN or PTP. This sort of technology, I think, is bringing an industrial robot a lot more closer to uh, cobots, which are becoming a lot more popular these days. I often get asked by students or other people online why they don't see me using cobots like the UR or even the Kuka Iwa very often. And for me, the reason I fell in love with robotics was the benefits that they bring in payload, you know, the, how much weight that they can carry and manipulate at high speeds. Whereas a cobot, you give away a lot of the benefits. A robot that you can move and work next to is never gonna be able to do what something like this little Agulus can do or a Quantec or a Fortec, which I think is amazing because it's removing a level of abstraction that can make very complicated tool parts without understanding KRL at a high level. So I'm very excited to install it, to be honest. So the next step is I'm going to install our Shunk Gripper onto our little Agulus KR10 here. And I'm going to set up our external six degree mouse and see if I can get this working and whether I can easily make a KRL program using the ready to pilot system.
So I've installed the external six axis mouse onto the end of our KUKA robot, the little Agulus here, as well as plugged in the USB wireless hub into the control PC. All that's left for me to do is to install the KUKA option package, upload a new project to the robot and see how this thing actually performs. So now that we've got all the hardware installed on the KUKA robot, the next step is to install the KUKA option package via Work Visual on the project that's running our KUKA robot, and then we should be up and running, ready to play with the Ready to Pilot system. So after a couple weeks break, after realizing that Ready to Pilot 2.1 actually needs KSS 8.6.6, .6, while we were running 8.6.5, I have since had a KUKA technician come out and upgrade our KUKA KSS to the required version. And now it's just a matter of installing the option package. So I'm going to load up Work Visual now and install the option package so that I can have a quick play with Ready to Pilot 2.1. So let's jump straight in. So now that the project is on the KUKA control PC, the mouse is installed, I've plugged in the USB wireless hub and I have calibrated the mouse using the Ready to Pilot software on the smart pad. And now it's as simple as holding down the dead man switch on the smart pad. I mean, this is genuinely impressive. This is turning this KUKA Agulus, which is an industrial robot, into a cobot. And I gotta say, like, I have done, after five, six years, working with these robots and other types of robots, this is pretty, pretty impressive. Like, I've controlled robots with Kinect, I've uh, programmed for Xbox controllers, if anybody follows me on social media, you've probably seen that. And this, I've got to say, just the responsiveness, how you can just push and the robot pushes. And as someone who doesn't use the six axis mouse much, six axis, six degree mouse much on the smart pad, I gotta say that this is so incredibly intuitive. Like you could give this to a little kid and say, you know, push the mouse and the robot goes back. That's, that's just cool. It's just cool. I've created a new KRL file on the smart pad. It's set to the current home position. I'm going to use the ready to pilot system in order to generate all our motion commands. So we're gonna go from the home position, PTP to our little magazine to linear move in to collect a block, linear move out, and then we're gonna pick a position on the table, position the block, but all the motion commands are gonna be generated using our ready to pilot, just to give it a test and see how it performs. After another short break where I've had to be focused on our Quantec for a project that's currently underway, I finally had a bit of free time to jump back onto our Agulus and continue having a play with the Ready to Pilot system. What I've done so far is all the tool pathing using the Ready to Pilot, which has been incredibly intuitive with the buttons one and two for linear and PTP set. The only time I've really had to jump back on the laptop is I wanted to do a bit of custom KRL. That was just so that I could iterate over each block as we picked it up and placed it in a different position so that we would end up with a nice little domino run. Now I'm going to use the external mouse to create a subroutine KRL file, which I'm going to call up at the very end of my primary one, just to knock over our blocks. And that will be it for this program. From roughly our final position of the code, bring the robot down. Move the robot down into position. Hit one for a PTP movement. And twist along the tool axis to knock over our block.
I can safely say I have never programmed a robot quite as intuitively as I have with the Ready2 pilot system. Like I said earlier, it really does bridge the gap between industrial robot and cobot. And that's pretty cool. I really hope some of you enjoyed this video because I will be following it up eventually with a tutorial on how to install both the Kuka option package in Work Visual as well as the physical mouse on the actual robot and really delve into some of the more advanced features that just didn't really make sense for an introductory playful video where I just wanted to introduce myself to it and get a bit comfortable with the capabilities such as you can limit the translations and rotations of the mouse when you're using it, the buttons, how we can access them, a lot more options. Today I used pretty much linear and PTP movement, but they have a whole wealth of options in there that I wouldn't mind getting to grips with, plus just custom KRL for those buttons as well. And the more advanced, such as being able to record spline movement on the go as you're manipulating the robot, which I think is a pretty powerful feature, which I didn't really think made sense for this video. So, big thanks to Kruka, like and subscribe, and hopefully lots more robot content to come soon.